Hello and welcome back to another video on how to test a. Uh, and in this one, we're going to have a look at how you can test an API. So the scenario is the same. You are sitting in an interview and the interviewer is asking you, how would you test an API? So from my point of view, in this case, um, he or she is not meaning how we would test in the sense uh, what tools you would use. Would you use a specific library? What language would you test this in? Um, but more to see how you are thinking, because everybody can learn a tool. But you need to know what to ask that tool to do. And that's more important from my point of view than just knowing how to use, for example, Postman or how to use Rest Assured. So they're asking you how you should, or how you would test an API. Here I have an API, um, RESTful Booker. It's a nice API. with which creates uh, bookings for an application. So the first thing which I would ask them is, how is the documentation um, structured here? Um, and I'll, you'll see in a few seconds why that is important. I mean, if you have a documentation in, <clears throat> I don't know, like a Word document or a conference page, it's good, but well, it's it's text and it's not always being kept up to date, but it's, it's good. It's a point to start. What you would like them to say is either documentation is Confluence, uh, Word document, or best case would be to have something like a, um, a swagger. Um, why do I say this? Well, because here in the in this swagger, you have basically the endpoints presented and you can try them one by one. I know, let's give it a border ID. Okay, but coming back to this, so they will tell you that you have some sort of documentation. Perfect. So the first thing which you should tell, again, this is how I would do it. It's, you may add to my solutions or you may choose not to use all of them. But the first thing which I would do is say, well, I will be testing the endpoints one by one. So you have documentation and you know all the endpoints. What do I mean by endpoint? Well, you have it here nicely described. You have this create token, you have this get bookings, get booking by ID, create booking, update booking, partial update booking, delete booking, and you also have a health check. So the first thing is I would call all of these endpoints to see if I get a response. Normally, if documentation is written correctly, then when I call the endpoints, I should get a positive response, like a response code 200. So this is the first thing. The second thing is for each of this, I would call them a little bit different. So if I have this um, get booking, I would give a booking ID which makes no sense. So I would either add uh, a string or add a really high number, and I would expect to have uh, a response which is not a 200, but an error code indicating something uh, usable. For example, the booking ID that you entered is not present. Good. Um, so while I'm doing the first kind of testing, meaning testing the endpoints, I'm also testing the documentation. So I'm doing two tests in one. And you can mention that. And if you find any discrepancies in the documentation, of course, you would then update them. After having checked the endpoints, there will be cases, most possibly, in, I mean, in 99% of the cases, some of the endpoints that you will be using will have one form of authentication. So you will need to do tests in order to see or in order to check that that authentication is working correctly. It may be authentication uh, with username and password, although that is slowly but surely not being used that often anymore. Um, you will have maybe a token base you see here, um, you give a username and a password and you get a token. And with that token, you can 
uh, create a booking. So you know now the endpoints. You, you have tested now the endpoints. You know documentation is working. You know how you can test the authentication. Then the next step would be to test the endpoints together. In this case, for example, you have a create booking and you have a get booking. So a test would be you create a booking and then you call the other endpoint and get the booking that you just created. And um, you would expect that, for example, if you created this booking and has ID number I don't know, 10, when you get booking number 10, then it shows the data that you created. If you do an update booking, the same thing. You would update a booking, and when you check it, you would check that um, the new data, the updated version, is present. You do a delete booking, and you get then a get booking, or get bookings. If you get a, do a get bookings, that your number, the number of bookings would be less by one because you just deleted one. And if you try to get the booking that you deleted, you should get a correct error message. Good. So these things are ideal until now. You may want, when you say the testing of the endpoints for the first part, to add a couple of um, extra checks. So I said you test the endpoints that you get the correct result. You test for errors. What you can also test for is headers. So you can see here, I have a header described. So for example, that the application um, has a content type of JSON. Uh, then you can test for the structure of your uh, response. Oh, um, you can test for um, yeah, structure and type. So if, if you have this, so again, you test the endpoints. You test that the response codes are correct. So generally 200. You test for, for um, response codes for errors. You will test for... Um, you test the headers. You will test the format that you accept. You will test the structure of your maybe of your request body and of your response. This pretty much concludes the functional part. So you want to go in a bit of a non-functional part. So um, one part is performance. So it, this uh, RESTful Booker has um, also another part which is interesting and that is every 10 minutes the database gets resetted so a test would be um, that you uh, you add constantly add um, um, bookings for about 10 minutes and you constantly check their number and about 10 minutes and a few seconds, let's say 11, 10 minutes and 30 seconds, when you do your check, they will not be incremental anymore, but they will, the database will have reset itself. And last but not least, um, because I want to keep this video under um, 10 minutes, so uh, I'm already at the nine minute mark, I, um, what you should say is, after you have checked the API, so you know now the API, you know the endpoints, authentication, documentation, you know the endpoints together, you, you did performance testing. Um, you want to check the API or to test the API in relation with the UI. So this RESTful Booker actually also has um, a website which uh, it connects to. So as do most APIs, of course. So a couple of checks that you want to be doing is um, if you make an, in the API or via the API um, a booking, then that booking should also be visible in the front end. And that booking should also be visible or present in the database. So there you have it. I mean, um, I for one, if somebody would express all of these points to me, I would know that they know how to test an API. Of course, this list or this test, which I uh, presented to you, are, it's not a full list of what you can do. But from my view, at least, it would definitely help you in an interview.
it will help you stand out. It will help you show that you know what you're doing. And if somebody has something against it, they, they can just write to me. Um, and I can add points if you have different points, which I forgot to add. But I hope, as always, that you enjoyed this video. And I will definitely see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and have a good one. Bye-bye.